The Ultimate Fighter returned last night, Team Chandler versus Team McGregor. Season 31 of the UFC's Trojan Horse. I say Trojan Horse because back in the day, the UFC was banned. But the Ultimate Fighter, that allowed it to get on mainstream TV and permeate the minds and turn it into the mega blockbuster sport that it is today. Now... Last night was a very entertaining episode, okay? Team Chandler got off to a great start. Roosevelt Roberts knocked out his Team McGregor foe in just 10 seconds, and McGregor didn't even show up to the weigh-ins. Listen, not talking crap, I didn't show up for a fight once. But still, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Daniel Cormier, because DC came out this week and gave his list of the top five ultimate fighters of all time. And it was a good list. Listen, let's go through it real quick. Number five, he had Kamara Usman, the former pound for pound number one. Number four, Rose Nama Yunus, strawweight champ, knocked out Joanna Jacek a couple of times. Number three, everyone's favorite former champion, Sugar Rashad Evans. And number two, good old Mikey B. Yep, that's right. Put me in there. Thank you very much. And at number one, the OG, the original gangster, the original ultimate fighter, of course, Forrest Griffin. So that got me thinking, who would my top five be? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. And to be honest, there's no right or wrong in this. You know what I mean? Everyone on that list that DC just mentioned, they're all fantastic fighters. They're all in the Hall of Fame, former champions, and just had incredible careers. And that's what the Ultimate Fighter has done for us over the years, shown us so much fantastic talent in terms of mixed martial arts. I mean, the list really does, it's endless. You know, to think of all the talent that came through the Ultimate Fighter, I mean, it makes my head spin to do so. So, here's five from me, okay? Number five, Diego Sanchez. Diego the Nightmare Sanchez. Diego the Dream Sanchez. Diego out of his mind Sanchez. Maybe. Listen, he won the Ultimate Fighter season one in 2005, and he went on to fight for the UFC for a whopping 15 years. I mean, what a career that man had. He was the original Ultimate Fighter. He knocked out Kenny Florian in one round to become the first ever tough winner because that was 30 minutes before Forrest Griffin and Stefan Bonner went into the octagon and threw down like absolute maniacs. Sanchez and Florian, they were really lightweights, let's be honest, but they competed at middleweight well, because they wanted a shot at the UFC. They wanted to get a foot in the door and if they had to jump up 30 pounds, they were willing to do it. Diego Sanchez had a great career, lost a UFC title fight against BJ Penn in 2009, had seven fights of the night, always competitive, great jiu-jitsu, great striking, and he beat Clay Guida in 2009 in one of the craziest fights you'll ever see, and that put Diego Sanchez in the Hall of Fame. All right, another one, a fan favorite, a cult-like figure in mixed martial arts I am talking about. Nathaniel Diaz, better known as Nate Diaz. Eat your vegetables. The brother of Nick, the little brother. The top five season winner, 2007. And he currently has a record of 21 and 13. Listen, Nate Diaz is boxing Jake Paul soon. We'll see how that turns out. Jake Paul's bigger, he's younger, he's a boxer. We'll see how it does, though, and I wish Diaz all the best. He beat Manny Gamburian in the final of the lightweight tournament. He didn't go on to become a world champion. He did lose a world title fight, though, to Benson Henderson in 2000. 2012 when he challenged for the lightweight belt but there's a good argument that Nate Diaz became the biggest star than anyone else that came through the Ultimate Fighter. This next guy is going to get a special mention of course representing Australia Robert Whittaker the Reaper the tough smashes champ in 2012 who also went on to become the middleweight champion of the world with a record of 24 and 6 he won the smashes the UK versus Australia season. Listen, the UK and the Aussies, they're massive, massive sporting rivals. And Whitaker went on to win the entire tournament, outpointing Brad Scott in the finale. But as we know, he was at the wrong weight class. He went two and two as a welterweight, actually got stopped a couple of times, moved up to 185, and the man has become an absolute wrecking machine, okay? He's one of the most technical fighters that we have in the middleweight division. After moving up, he eventually became the middleweight champion in 2017 when he beat Yoel Romero, the soldier of God. I love you, Mike! For the interim title. The fact that you're standing there without... 
fucking belt on like you're a champion makes me sick. You should be ashamed of yourself. And then he was promoted to the full champ when George St. Pierre retired. <laughs> Let me tell you, I love Robert Whittaker in every way. The man's just so cool, calm and collected. A nice guy, great sense of humour and he's a monster inside the octagon. The last time we saw him was against Marvin Vittori. Of course, he's had two fights with Israel Adesanya. Came up short both times. But against Marvin Vittori, he showed that he's getting better all the time. And Blabber in jiu-jitsu represented Australia at the Olympics and the boxing is just sublime. And I'm telling you, when he does finally get his hands on Israel Adesanya for the third time, I'm not saying he beats him because I've got a lot of respect for Izzy, but there's a good chance. There is a good chance that he will eventually get the job done. All right, there was this guy from Clitheroe called Michael Bisping. He was the tough three winner in 2006. Yes, I am that guy putting myself on the list. In fact, my channel manager put me on the list and I can't think of another one. So we're going to go with that. Won the Ultimate Fights in 2006. I've never been to America, never been to Las Vegas. And they used to subtitle me back in the day. Now I call the sport. Now I'm a commentator. Funny how things change. Retired with a record of 39, the middleweight champion and the Hall of Famer. And still, to this day, a total dickhead. Well, Bisping's Bisping just a dick. To do it. <laughs> I won top three years as a fighter, but I returned as a coach on season nine and season 14. And by the way, we won those seasons as well as a coach. I mean, when I fought Dan Henderson, my opposite coach, at UFC 100, that did not go my way. Let's just put it like that. But on season 14 against Mayhem Miller, I won that one, thankfully. So, listen, the ultimate fight to change my life in many, many ways. I had some tremendous memories. Still in touch with a lot of people from that show. Kendall Grove, who won as a middleweight. Incredible fighter as well. And every season of the ultimate fighter, we saw some tremendous talent. I know I said this earlier, but honestly, if you go through the list... The amount of people that have come through that show. Kelvin Gastelum, there's one that springs to mind. I mean, it's a non-stop amount. But number one, who do I have as the ultimate, ultimate fighter? i got to agree with DC. Forrest Griffin. He's the man. He's the man. Listen, he was the biggest star from season one. He won season one. He's the OG ultimate fighter. And of course, he went on to become the light heavyweight champion when he went on to defeat Quinton Rampage Jackson at UFC 86 in 2008. Forrest Griffin, one of the nicest guys that you could ever meet. Well, they wanted a big slow guy to follow Anderson around and make him look real good. <laughs> and they're like, Forrest is a big slow guy. He takes a beating well. Ah, I'm going to him to do it. He's stupid. He was about to quit mixed martial arts but then he found out about the ultimate fighter he was working as a cop in georgia and he put all of his belongings in storage and never went back to georgia for it jokes he keeps expecting to see stuff in storage wars forrest griffin fun fact friday or fun fact of the day he does those on instagram what's up guys it is forrest here with the fun fact friday i know do i even do this who knows this friday's fun fact is about snow which uh, appears white, but it's actually translucent. It's actually the rays of light shining off the snow that give you that whole color spectrum thing and make it appear white. So snow is actually uh, not white, but it is pretty cold. Um, another bonus fun fact, monkeys have been known to make snowballs and have snowball fights with each other. You can see him now, he's catching people uh, at Power Slap. He'll be at the Performance Institute. He does a great job running that. Forrest Griffin, just an absolute legend of the sport. And shout out, of course, to his opponent, Mr. Stefan Bonner. Rest in peace to that man. So, the Ultimate Fighters back. Season one was fantastic. McGregor didn't show up for the first one, but he's doing a good job so far, giving a good account of himself. Wearing some beautiful suits, pulling up in Lamborghinis, flashing the cash. I just want to see the fight. When is the fight going to go down? December. Mark my words. Don't know anything about it. That's my guess. Hope you're all well. Subscribe. Ring the bell. See you soon.